Are you a tad squiffy or completely munted? People don't need to know, but when you're pissed as a fart, meaning drunk, you're sure as hell gonna tell them. And when you do, you'll need a good or maybe bad way to tell them. Welcome to the third in my series concerning drinkies. In this episode, learn about the many mad ways to tell somebody that you're bladdered. That's another one meaning drunk. My name is definitely a male name. This is good bad English. Let's get on with the show. Apparently, there are more than 3,000 different ways to say that you're fucked, as in to be drunk. And that was one of them. But there's being drunk and there's being drunk. There are levels of being drunk before somebody blacks out, flatlines, or is comatose. All of which pretty much meaning that you're finished. However, along the way, there'll be stages. I'll make it easy for you and put the more commonly used terms into three categories. We'll get to the sweary ones later, so stick around. Let's begin with the lowest level of being drunk. If somebody notices that you're slightly intoxicated, you might simply say to them that you've had a drink, or you could say to them that you've had one or two. If that person just so happens to be a police officer, then you'll be considered under the influence. Yeah, you're fucked in a different way if that situation comes about. If you've had one or two after work, you could say that you're slightly merry. You could add an old Latin twist to things and tell your colleagues that you're a little inebriated. Those that you're drinking with might respond by saying that they're also a tad tipsy. Tad meaning a little bit. You can use the word tad and add the word squiffy to confirm that you're a tad squiffy. That's a good one. Use it. After you and your colleagues have had a few, you may have reached the mid-level category. So people could simply look you up and down and say, you're drunk. You might confess to your inebriated state by saying that you've gotten a bit messy. If you're struggling to speak clearly and you need an easy word to pronounce, you could describe yourself as being a bit sloshed. You may well be in this state because you've joined a group of British lads out on the lash and you could therefore describe yourself as being lashed. As your night comes to an end, the kebab shop owner might be staring at you unamused as you spill your doner kebab on the floor, to which you may struggle to tell him that you're a little lubricated. Lastly, here are some of the common top level ways that you can say that you're drunk. When you wake up in the morning, still fully clothed and possibly covered in kebab, you might think to yourself that last night you got a bit plastered. As you arrive at work, you might proudly tell your colleagues that you got wrecked the night before. You'll likely remind them on several occasions that you were completely hammered. They'll probably look unimpressed as you tell them that you woke up with a traffic cone in your bed because you were totally trolleyed the night before. You could very well have taken the trolley home too. You'll likely try and justify your shenanigans by saying that you were totally off your face. You may also brag to the new girl in sales that you got completely slaughtered last night with the senior management. Lastly, and one that was popular when I was at university, you may agree with your drinking buddies from senior management when they're all bragging about how they were beyond mullered the night before. Mullered. Now, that's German, no doubt, but I have no idea how that entered into English, but it's used. Please, let me know in the comments if you know. Next up, the sweary ones. Mind the gap. Now, for the naughty part. Try never to be that person. You know, the person that repeatedly needs to tell you they're drunk when they're drunk. It's not a good look. However, if you need to be that person, then make your confessions colourful. Use one or all of these 11 foul-mouthed ways to tell us. Okay, let's begin with the term asshole. Of course, that's ass, not ass. Ass is your bum and ass is an animal. Bollocksed, from the word bollocks, meaning testicles. You'll likely hear that said by Brits. Cunted. <laughs> Whoa, the C word. I'll tackle this tricky word in another episode, so subscribe to be notified. Fannied. 
Similar to the C word in meaning, but only to Brits, Americans use fanny to mean ass. That's still ass, not ass. Foobar. Foobar is an acronym for fucked up beyond all recognition. I'm not exactly sure how you would use it though. I guess when Henry, the postie, wakes you up in the morning with a delivery and looks a little bit surprised at the state of you, you might say to him, FUBAR HENRY, FUBAR! Off your tits or off your head. I guess the off your head came first. Off your head normally means that you're crazy. Off your tits, however, just means extremely drunk. Oh, and by the way, if you use this, you or the subject don't necessarily need to own breasts. Pissed. Pissed is one of the more common British terms for being drunk. Go one better by saying you're pissed as a fart. Because that makes sense. Rat -assed. More arse usage. Similarly, you could also say that you're as pissed as a rat. I'm gonna guess that this came first and it somehow references something to do with sailing. Come at me in the comments if you know otherwise. Shit-faced. If there are any origins for this term, I'm not sure I wanna know about them. Similarly, you could say shit-fucked, but I think I just made that up. Twatted. The classic. Again, like the C word, and again, I'll save that for another episode. But for now, twat is slang for a woman's watchamabits. You know, down there. And lastly, wankered. Yep, ending on another British classic. So to wank is to masturbate. There's a link between most of these extreme sweary terms, but it's probably not what you think. Allow me to explain. Mind the gap. There is a similarity between many of the terms for telling somebody that you're drunk or pajamaed. That's another term for being drunk. Did you spot the similarity? Yep, a great many of them will end with the letters ED. But don't be thinking that any word can be used as a term for being drunk by just adding ED at the end of it. No, no, <laughs> not that simple. I tested this out with a chap that helps me put these episodes together. His name is not to be shared. So we were on a boat having a tipple, meaning alcoholic beverage, and we found that many of the surrounding objects didn't work as terms for being drunk by simply adding ED to the end. For example, sailed, watered, or roped are all words that are already in use, so they won't work. Fish fingered, however, will work. See, nobody normally fish fingers something, or <laughs> at least I hope they don't. And I guess that's also why it works. The added amusement of <laughs> imagining somebody fish fingering something or somebody is also why it makes it a good term. Add an over-the-top adverb to your new term for being drunk and... Mate, I was utterly fish-fingered last night, mate. Dear audience, with your input, imagine what we can achieve. Make up a new term for being drunk by simply adding ED to the end of an existing word and share it in the comments. After that, be sure to follow Good Bad English on Instagram and or Twitter and have your say before these episodes get made. I eagerly await your input. Thank you for joining me in this episode on the series I'm doing about drinking. Be sure to check out the other episodes. There's one on the bizarre terms that the younger folk use these days, like we're off skis for some brewskis. And there's another about the various places you can go to get sozzled. There you go, that's another one for being drunk. As always, if you like this episode, then delicately press the like button. And to learn more good, bad English, be sure to hit that subscribe button. See you in the next one.